That's right, yeah, let's get mad. Let's go crazy. Let the hate flow through your veins. Or maybe you, you know, just accept that it's a YouTube video and the whole point of the wrestling community is to have some fun. What's that? Nope, you don't want to do that. Okay, cool. Let's go absolutely crazy. Sorry, but we do always have to go through that big wall where we do a video where it's like WWE versus AEW. But the truth is the truth. And I am a truth teller because there are some wrestlers out there who look at New York and decide, do you know what? I don't want to go in that direction. I'd rather walk down here. So that's right, we are talking about 10 AEW stars who didn't want to sign for WWE or just 10 wrestlers who didn't want to sign for WWE and why they didn't. <laughs> I screwed it up again. I love the first one or technically the 10th one because it is powerhouse Will Hobbs and this dude rocks and definitely would not fit into my hand. And I'm amazed that WWE didn't snap him up as soon as they saw him because he's massive. But he did talk about this when he appeared on the AEW Unrestricted podcast. And there is a little bit of a story. Because he had the WWE tryout and was told there was nothing for him at the moment. Because why would you want a man mountain in your predetermined and simulated sports league? And then as soon as he had a match on AEW, the phone rang. It was WWE going, <laughs> And you believe it, we found an opportunity. He was not going to be tricked into this though, and he saw what was happening. I'm going to read you the quote, because he said, I am not Boo Boo the Fool, as my grandma would say. And Boo Boo the Fool is going to be my brand new wrestling name. Hey, we've been thinking about you and are interested in you. No, flub you. I ain't no sucker. I'd rather you tell me 100% no than try to BS me. I love this guy. I will tell you this right now, however. You give it a few years when contracts are up for renewal everybody is gonna want him. As is still true for number nine, even though they've been around for ages, the Young Bucks. One of the best tag teams in history for my money. If you go back to 2008, you can see Matt and Nick Jackson on WWE TV quite a few times, especially when they dressed up as D-Generation X when The Miz and Morrison were feuded with DX. They had more tryouts after this, but were never offered the deal. So decided, well, why don't we ignore this? Go out onto the independent scene and change wrestling forever. They did. The turning down came just before AEW was born too, because as people have talked about, Triple H reached out to both the Jacksons and said, look, you can come to NXT for three months, and if you're not happy after that period, we will just let you go, so talk about making a grand. The Young Bucks said no, and as we know, the rest is history. And thank goodness they didn't, because they're a pivotal part of all the lead wrestling. As is number eight. Britt Baker. The star of AEW's women division, you too can see her on WWE television, especially one time when she got squashed by Nia Jax. Now you'll be going, oh, I can't believe they used her as an enhancement talent, but a lot of superstars have to go through this. Look at someone like James Ellsworth with Braun Strowman. You just never know. We don't know the details to any great extent, although Baker has said in the past, WWE definitely let me know they were interested, but the interest wasn't mutual. So instead, she went to AEW and smashed it. Don't forget that she was part of All In back in 2018 too. And that is so long ago now, it doesn't really feel real. What definitely is real, although somewhat ironically now, is that in at number seven is MJF. Now seriously, Maxwell Jacob Freeman has been all over WWE TV in the past, Raw, SmackDown, and in NXT, where he was a security guard that Samoa Joe pushed out the way. That caused such a fracas, MJF even parodied this on Dynamite, and in 2015, he even auditioned for Tough Enough. Why WWE passed on that, I'll never know, but during an interview with Inside the Ropes, Friedman did admit that when it came to making choices, he wanted to go somewhere new, he wanted to go somewhere fresh, and he wanted to go somewhere where there wouldn't be too much control so he could portray his character on the biggest stage possible. To quote him, he said, if I go to the other place, and this is not me shitting on them, I know they would try to change me, and as of right now, there's nothing to change. Now, it's been a really smart play, all things considered. We all know all the craziness with MGF right now. But if he does ever go to WWE, he is just going to be this persona. And I bet WWE will try desperately to make sure that he comes out with the clothing and the music and all the presentation that we've seen before. I mean, they did with Cody Rhodes and they will want to do it again. Although saying that, who the hell knows what's going on with him anyway? I mean, work, shoot, work, shoot, brother. 
It's a mystery like evolution. We can keep going on with all of these two, which is kind of good, otherwise there'd be no video. But number six, it's Kenny Omega. Now this happened a long time ago when WWE's developmental territory was known as Deep South Wrestling and Kenneth Omega was one of their trainees and he was there for such a long time that if you go and do some Googling, you'll even find some early Kenny promos. I'm sure the cleaner could have stayed there too and been an absolute success, but after a while he realized, I see myself better than I think you see me. So I'm gonna leave this place, I'm gonna head to Japan and I am going to become a star the likes of the world has never seen before. <laughs> Basically what he did. And of course there is a select part of the internet which will now lose their mind because I've said that. But go and look at the stats, people. You don't think Kenny Omega is like a major plus to any wrestling promotion? You look in the other way. This kind of decision-making process seemed to go through all of the Bullet Club and the Elite, though. Because in number five, it's Hangman Adam Page. Because Hangman made no secret that his dream goal was to go to WWE. And yet when the opportunity was presented to him... He said no. Talking to Brian Campbell on the State of Combat show, Paige was very open about how WWE was the biggest mountain for him. And yet when he did arrive at this juncture, it just didn't feel right. It wasn't something he was interested in, maybe because of their own direction of travel. And given that all of his buddies were about to start AEW, he was probably thinking, well, I want to be part of that. And don't forget how important that is as well. Imagine you had traveled the world with your pals and they told you, oh man, there's an opportunity here to be on international television with a rival wrestling promotion. I think most of us would put our hands up and go, you know what? Let's give it a shot. Do you want one that's a little bit more wishy-washy? Sure you do, because it's CM Punk 4. I don't mean the fourth CM Punk, idiot. That's the number. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again, I never think that CM Punk is going to go back to WWE. It's why before AEW, I was also adamant that CM Punk would never come back to wrestling because they were the only game in town. During a recent interview with ESPN though, Punk said this, and I'm going to read it to you because I think it's important. I remember one of the first things I ever said to them was, above all, don't play games. And they played games. Some things never change. When you enter a conversation with people you have a pass with and you know who they are, how seriously can you take it? I know exactly who they are and they just continue to prove it. I'm trying to be as diplomatic as I possibly can. I mean, surely that means what we think it means. And if it does mean what we think it means, what does it mean? Wait, no, that's not correct. But it does stand to reason that if you heard CM Punk was about to go and sign with AEW, you'd at least make a play and throw a bunch of money at him. But by all accounts, well, they're a little bit stupid and they lost him. Or you could say that it was for the best, which is the same with number three, probably, Sammy Guevara. Because as we know in 2022, WWE seems more interested in football players or former athletes to turn into WWE superstars, which kind of was the same in 2017. This is when Sammy went for a WWE tryout and it kind of sounds like nobody got signed off the back of it. And after doing a bunch of blow up drills and trying to make people go, <laughs> I can't carry on. There was a very real sense in the air, apparently, that you were being looked down on if you were indeed an independent wrestler. I mean, how stupid is that? But as Guevara said on the Talk is Jericho podcast, it seemed like when the cameras were on, they really played it up. It felt like a whole gimmick to me because everyone was chill until the cameras are on and suddenly they start drilling and yelling at you. I'm like, all right, I see what this is. It definitely opened up my eyes because I wouldn't want to be there. Maybe not ever, but certainly not now just because of the way they treated me. Maybe it's different now, I don't know. But during that time, I saw that unless I was somebody, it's going to be hell here. <laughs> well, I tell you this, Sammy Guevara is a somebody now. Don't never say never. And it is even more nuts with number two, <laughs> Jade Cargill. Because you would assume that WWE just saw Jade Cargill walk into a room and go, sign it, get the pen right now, sort this out. And it kind of sounds like that did happen to a certain extent, but it was Jade that went, no thanks, I'm okay. Because as Cargill has explained, it's basically how they pitched the lifestyle to her. Because they were like, well, you've got a family and you've got a child. And if you can't work for WWE, you're never going to see those people. You're going to have to get a nanny. You're going to have to do all of these things. Whereas AEW was like, nah, man, we, we can make it work. Don't worry about it. Now, I get why WWE does this, because they want to make sure that you're passionate about the business. But why the hell wouldn't you go out of your way to calm people down rather than rile them up? And also, taking this attitude meant you lost Jade Cargill. And I tell you this, you think she's a star now? Just you wait. And do you think this was the first time WWE has done this? Of course it's not, because in at number one, 
John Moxley. The reason I say John Moxley rather than Dean Ambrose is because it all ties in. As Ambrose's contract was coming due, the man behind the jeans knew that he wanted to do something different and a little bit more edgy. WWE wouldn't let him. So essentially he wanted to bring Mox to Raw or to SmackDown and because he got a hand put in his face, it's all right, I'll pack my bags and I'll go somewhere else. I mean, his mind was so made up, he never even looked at the contract renewal, so he doesn't even know how much money he was being offered. And this just blows my mind because if you believe somebody has that much worth, why wouldn't you give them a little bit of creative freedom and see what happens? And really when you break it right down, he was forced out of the promotion he was forced to wear a gas mask and stick a needle up his ass. If you think I'm joking, just go and Google this. It's been like three years now and I still can't believe it. Now, any other wrestlers that refuse to sign with WWE, make sure you let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Then head over to whatculture.com where you can read yourself some articles. Make sure you come follow us on social media at Simon316 or at WhatCultureWWE. And I tell you, I promise you this, we have a lot of videos. They're lonely. So you gotta go watch one. My name is Simon Culture. Thank you very much for joining me as always. See you soon.